Hello mate, my name's Ryan Wright. And I'm Jerry. Welcome to Reasons to See. Well, we give you reasons to see. And not a bloody see. The world's end. So why don't you and I have a good hangout, mate? Reason to bloody see number one. Simon fucking Pegg. Simon Pegg. Fucking love him in this movie. Simon you know? Pegg. Normally, uh, Nick Frost is more of the high energetic, you know, idiot one, and then you got Simon Pegg who's more subtle and the smarter one. This time they really flipped it around, and Simon Pegg is uh, the idiot, the more of like the guy who's really living in the past this time. He managed to, to do a very over the top character, but make him very human at the same time. The character of Gary King is a, is a fuck up. He's a shystery, kind of slick. He's that sort of oily guy that you knew in high school that, you know, never ever grew up. It's both funny and kind of touching. I just love the way that Simon Pegg has great comedic timing, but then on a dime, he can switch and give a monologue that makes you cry. Like, he's a really good actor. Reason to see number two, Nick Frost. I like how this guy was able to tone himself down yet still be hilarious at the same time, you know? Well, they completely flipped the dynamic. Again, it's like, you know, he's he's not even, like, his sidekick anymore. They give them a backstory where it's like, Nick Frost kind of hates this guy for most of the film. <laughs> yeah. And it's a really cool dynamic to watch, especially in, in light of their dynamic in Shaun of the Dead and, and Hot Fuzz. I am concerned for Nick Frost, though, because he is very overweight, and I want him <laughs> to stick around for a long time. So, Nick Frost, if you're watching this, please, I know it's funnier when you're fat, but please lose some weight, because I want you to be around for a while. You're a funny guy. He's really funny in this, but he also, they give him a lot of actual, like, performance-y stuff to do. Definitely. Like, again, he, like, there are monologues that he gives where you're like, wow, dude. Reason to say number three, the writing. There is writing in this film. There is some writing yeah. in this movie. Something tells me they had a script before they filmed this yeah. movie. The, the writing's excellent. These guys, uh, it's kind of intimidating because, you know, I want to be a filmmaker too. And to see the consistency of men who never fail is just yeah, ridiculous. The, the writing's solid all again. I, I love the setup of, like, it's like a 45-minute setup for what we're the real plot is gonna be. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it really, as I, I actually never even saw a trailer for this film. I, I wanted to know nothing about it. And as I was watching this, it's like, okay, is this just a, a buddy movie in a way, you know, coming of age story? And then it becomes the, you know, sci-fi story that we've been waiting, that, that it is. And, and it's so cool because it managed to actually combine both late into the film, but it made so much sense when it actually happened. It, they build it up in such a gradual way. And they, you know, luckily the characters and the story at hand are already entertaining and interesting enough mm -hmm. so that when they start introducing the sci-fi elements, they're still actually kind of surprising and fun. Solid comedy writing, solid drama writing. There you go. Boom. Reason to see number four. A directing. Edgar Wright knows how to make a comedy that has a lot of heart at the same time. He gets invested in his own characters. He really understands actors. Like, this guy is a genius director when it comes to these uh, comedy films. And I'm sure he could do other genres too, because if you think about it, like, his films are like genre films that also happen to have comedy in them. Yeah, I mean, you know? we've seen Edgar Wright's zombie movie, his action movie, and his sci-fi movie now, yeah, exactly. all, all mashed up with comedy. And know? his Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was like his... I don't know, a comic book film in a way. Comic <laughs> yeah. book video game. Yeah, yeah exactly. The guy, the guy can really mix it up. All those staples of his visual style are there. They're not quite as cranked as they were in like Hot Fuzz, but they're all. It's very much an Edgar Wright film. And what I notice watching this is Edgar Wright has has an impeccable sense of timing because whether it comes from the editing or just the direction of a scene and and the actors too, timing is huge to their comedy, and they really have a master uh, a mastery of it. Yeah, I mean, this film has sci-fi thrills. It has comedic elements, it has dramatic elements, it has so many different elements at play here all into this one big bubble and he managed to pull the piece of art together in a, in a, in a strong comedic way. I don't think this is, this isn't my favorite one of the trilogy, as a matter of fact it's probably number third to me, number three to me, but that doesn't make it bad at all, it's still a fantastic film. It might be my favorite man, I love the shit out of it and I think Edgar Wright also directed the shit out of it. He directed the shit out of it. He did because when I was watching it I was like wow you, it really seems like you knew what every scene and shot was gonna look like and you assembled it thusly. Yeah, you know? it might be their most well-constructed film they've ever done. Definitely. Reason at scene number five! <laughs> that fucking ensemble. 
<laughs> the ensemble. Oh, ensembles. Ensembles, they are something. I like this, you know, these are like much older gentlemen we're yeah. watching this time around. They're great, it's like, it reminds me of just typical British comedy in a way. You got Martin Freeman, who's great. They're all they're all great, unique characters throughout. Oh yeah. Who's who's the uh, what's the actor's name? The one who was scared of the bully. Oh, Eddie Marzon. Yeah. Eddie Marzon loved him too. Yeah. Was fan. They're all good. Well, all of them are good. That's the thing is like, and again with these movies, you're always kind of looking for like, oh, which of their you know which of their buddies is gonna make a little appearance here, or who's gonna be you know a supporting role. So here you've got Eddie Marzon, like you said, you've got Patty Considine who was one of the Andes in Hot Fuzz with the mustaches. Martin Freeman, like you said, who, who had a brief appearance in Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. I like the way how the characters are written in such a way where, yes, they are archetypes, but at the same time, they're not stereotypical, if that they makes sense. They feel like real people. Yeah, like, exactly. They took that archetype and made it an actual guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It does make sense why they're at, because in a lot of these movies, you'd be watching it going, why the fuck are these guys tagging along with Simon Pegg? I mean, they're just idiots. But in this one, it actually made sense because of the writing and the portrayals of it. You know, it's like there is that subconscious factor of how this guy was a leader in their youth. Yeah. So they're gonna follow him still without, even if they're logically aware of how messed up this yeah. guy is, that there's something about them that has an innate feeling to follow him. Even know? though this is a bad idea, it's like, well, so the other guys are gonna be there. I, I guess, sure, mm. we'll go. <laughs> Reason to see number six! Great end of the trilogy! This is known by a couple names, uh, the, the longest of which is uh, three, I think it's the Three Flavors, the Cornetto Trilogy, or the Blood and Ice Cream Trilogy, or just the Cornetto Trilogy, but yeah, it's Blood and Ice Cream. Man. It's one of the best trilogies I've seen. Yeah. You know, it's, and they're not exact, they're not sequels per se, of course. They managed to make three different films that are three solid that are three solid films at the same time. Well, I, I also think I really appreciate what they've done here because I feel like that's the thing that Hollywood's kind of missing cuz like just to point out an example it's like people are like, "Oh, Bridesmaids is great. Let's make a sequel." And I was like, "Why? Why not just take those people and make another yeah, movie. Exactly. And it's like these guys got that idea and it's great. What makes, you know, Christopher Guest films work. It's like it's all the people you love, but doing a new story. And yeah. It's awesome, you know. And here it's like you get, like I said, your zombie flick, your big action movie, and now you get your like funky sci fi invasion of the body it's snatchers type exactly. of story. Even though it's the end to the trilogy, I do hope they make more films together. I re yeah, yeah, they I can, really they can make so. a saga. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be great. Reason to see number seven. The cinematography. That was one of the first things I noticed with this film was the mm. cinematography. I was like, it has a very old school look to it the whole time. This, yeah, and especially in that opening montage where you're going back in, into the past, you know, into the yeah. late 80s, early 90s, and it really feels like it's shot to really look and feel like you're in that time. It's shot with a certain type of grit at the same time. Yeah. It definitely has, like, it feels like it, like it was shot on a camera like a couple decades ago or something like yeah. that, you know? It, 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 it does look cool. It feels, like a, it feels like a real British movie. It does, right? And, yeah. I, and I almost wonder if they made have shot, I didn't notice in the credits, but I, they may have shot film for this just because it has that sort of feel. Bill Pope's shots, you know, are really good and, and it's it's clear that they must have studied some yeah. of these sci-fi flicks, you know, in the process. Reason to see number eight, the effects. They're very good, you know, that's what I love about them is that we go to these films mainly because of the comedy genre that they are, but when they honor the other genre so much. Yeah. In Shaun of the Dead, when there were zombie kills, Zombie kill when it was you yeah. Know, there's action off us. There's action in this one when there's sci-fi thrills. There's it's science fucking fiction. Yeah, exactly. And and the effects are done, you know, with a lot of love and respect for the process. That those movies that this movie is a love letter to, you know, hat. There is sort of a marriage of a lot of practical and a little bit of CG, and it's really cool. Yeah, and the CG is you know it's it's a little subtle at the same time. You know, like they use it in the right place. They use it. Yeah, they use it in the exact right places where it's like only CG can really pull this off right now. Yeah. And at the same time, it, it would be creepy at times too. Even when it was yeah. CG, it could be really creepy. Even when it was funny at times, there were some freaky moments. You know, with some of those effects. Good effects. Boom. Reason to see number nine, the music. Again, you know, Edgar Wright's movies, you know, he always picks really cool music for his movies, and this one is no exception, you know? Yeah! Listen to the music. The song choices, but also the score, because it does bring in that sort of heavy synth, kind of 80s sci-fi kind of score, which is a really goes along with that old-school sort of grit feel. Definitely. So, lots of cool music in here. Yeah.
Everything he said. Fucking A. Ryan's consensus! The world's end is the reason genre comedies are made. The world's end is the reason genre comedies are made. Genre comedies are some of my favorite types of comedy films to watch. I believe all comedy should have another type of genre in there. And this and the, these filmmakers pull it off well. Great cast and everything. Jerry's consensus. The world's end is the reason movies of any kind are made. The world's end is the reason movies of any kind are made. I had so much fun during this movie, I felt like a kid again because it was like, you know, usually you have to hamper your expectations nowadays because everything's pitched and packaged, but this was the first movie in forever that I was just excited about. I didn't have to alter my excitement and when I got in the theater, I just got a lot, I was not even aware of the theater until the credits started rolling. I was just lost in it. My heroes delivering Another great movie. Fucking A, go see it. It's awesome. Alright guys, thanks for checking out our review for The World's End. Why don't you go ahead, scroll that comment box below, and tell us, what's your favorite one out of this awesome trilogy? Yeah, and then once you're done with that, why don't you come on over here, check out this link, click it, and you'll get to see more episodes of Reasons to See, because there are other movies out, right? Right! And if you want to get, you know, like... Ryan right. Ryan right. <laughs> And if you want to, you know, like us on Facebook, you can click the link right here. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, you know, tweet us. We'll be buddies. Click the link right here. And last but not least, if you want to get updated every time a new review or a video of any kind is out, <gasps> subscribe. Click on it or your world will end. It it's, will. It's a threat, motherfucker. Yeah. That's right. Fucking... I know this is real, empowering, encouraging stuff to get you to subscribe. Yeah, if you don't go, if you don't subscribe, we will go on a pub crawl until we reach your house. Yeah. And then we will end you. Yeah, and before we kill you, we're gonna go, the world's ending. Yeah, we will. That's good. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, something. We can yeah. work on it. We second, can work on it. Second draft. Yeah. And now if we find a guy named Sean, we're gonna go, hey, Sean of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if we, then if we find a guy named Nicholas, we'll be like... Looks like you're about to become Nicholas Angel. Yeah. Because you'll be dead. We'll find a hairy guy and we'll be like, and we'll set him on fire and we'll be like, hot fuzz. Yeah. 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 Oh! oh, Ryan Ryan. <laughs>